Great having Kyle Dawkins back here on the program. He's now going to be taking on Phil Hawes at UFC Fight Night on May 8th. Kyle, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. You know, uh, uh, a little little upset with the result that I had uh, a couple weeks ago, but, you know, we're moving forward, so it's all good. For sure. I wanted to clarify that, right? So I saw, you know, obviously I went back and looked at what happened. I knew the fight was off. They said COVID protocols. I'm assuming he got COVID or something happened with his team if you're getting to fight now and he isn't. Nah, it was actually me. Oh, um, interesting. Okay. Uh, it was weird because on um, what was it? I think it was like Thursday or Friday before we flew out. Uh, we have a we have a COVID test, and uh, my test was negative. Um, as soon as we fly out on Tuesday, uh, we get tested and then quarantined for 24 hours, and then they'll text us in the next morning. And they haven't texted me. It was like 9 a.m. They didn't text me, and my manager called me, and I was like, "Oh, great, here we go, something's up." And he said, "Did the UFC call you yet?" And I said, "No, why?" And he said, "You tested positive." And I was like, "That's kind of weird. Like I, I haven't had any symptoms or." anything like that. So they finally contact me and they're like, you can quarantine up for 10 days here or you can drive home. And my coaches and I were like, yeah, we're not quarantining up. So we're just going to drive home. So we drove home. Uh, we left on, what was it? Wednesday around 7 PM and got home on Friday around one thirty, And we drove right to the, uh, right to another like uh, testing facility here in Philly. Uh, it's called vibe. We went there. I had a PCR test and it came up negative. So it was weird. So we're, I wasn't really sure what, what, what was going on or, or whatnot. Um, when I found out on in Vegas, uh, I couldn't get retested for some reason. I don't know why, but that's just the ruling. So that, that, that's that. Um, and then after that, not even, not even like a day after, I think it was like a couple hours after, they were asking me to fight uh, uh, Kizrayev again. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, sure. And they gave me two dates. I picked May because I didn't want to wait until July, and he wanted to wait until July. Um, they gave me until May. I'm, I'm sorry. I said May, and they said he wants to fight in July. And I was like, all right, well, I want to fight in May. Like, it's only a couple of weeks away. Like, what's the big deal? And I'm, I'm assuming, assuming it would be because of Ramadan. Right. That's why yeah. he, he wanted to wait. Which makes sense, um, yeah. Yeah, but I told them I didn't want to wait. I told them I was ready to go. Like, I, I'm fine. Like, I'm not going to take time off or whatever. Uh so I got Phil Hawes. He's taking the fight on short notice. Uh, I'm grateful for him to, to take the fight. Uh, I also saw that on Twitter, Deron Wynn was, was, was kind of talking about it, saying that he was scheduled to fight Phil in July. So he's kind of feeling some, some type of way, but oh well. Interesting. Okay, there's a lot of moving pieces there. That's interesting. So how, how are you doing, though, just having to go through all that and then having to reset and try and go into, into another fight when you were preparing for one opponent, now you got a new one, and you had to go through all this COVID stuff, which is just beyond your control. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, you know, I got, I got a lot of phone calls from the from from the, the the Vegas like health health people. They were trying to explain like you need to quarantine up and blah blah blah. And I was like, I got a test on Friday. I said it was negative, so I don't know what's going on with that. But I, I'm going to keep training. I'm going to keep keep doing what I'm doing. I I have a negative test to prove that I'm negative, so that that's what I based it off of. Um, as long as as far as like the fight goes and stuff like that, I think that it's it, it it's it's kind of a better fight in a way because he's two and zero in the UFC. Uh, as opposed to fighting a guy that's debuting. Um, he's got a little bit of, of hype behind him, being that he's coming off of, of two good performances. Uh, so I think it's, for me, it's a, it's a better like risk-to-reward ratio as opposed to fighting a guy who's debuting. Right. Um, the, the style matchup really doesn't change. Uh, I think uh, Kizraev had, had, had superior wrestling to what he has. So it's really just fine-tuning a little bit of things for the next like the next four weeks that I had, and, and, and here we are uh, uh, like about... 11 days out, so it's all good. And I imagine you're pretty familiar with Phil anyways because he's like an East Coast guy. I think originally he's from New Jersey. Like, did you know about him even before you were in the UFC and even before he made it because he's a guy that's been on sort of the regional scene for a while? Yeah, definitely. He's, he was a guy that's, that's been around. Um, I think, like, we might have been scheduled to f – not, not scheduled to fight, but, like, I think it was, like, an offer that I got one time or he got or something that CFFC tried to do. It just didn't work out. I don't know if it was, like, dates or whatnot. But, yeah, I, I know who he is. Um. I trained with Andrew Sanchez, who fought, who actually fought him uh, on the right. fight. Um, so I kind of have a little bit of background with that. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a good fighter. He's really explosive. He's he's not a guy who likes to use his wrestling as as uh, like the first the first thing to go. Uh, he likes to strike and likes to knock people out. But but and he tries to fall back on that wrestling if it doesn't work out. So. 
Interesting. Um, is Andrew Sanchez, by the way, back in Philly? I know he was in Montreal for, for camp. No, 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 he's, still, no he's, still, he's still in Canada. I trained with him a while, a couple of years ago. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure if he had uh, moved back or not or what the deal was. Just getting some clarification there. That's cool. Yeah. Um, what type of camp have you had? Like you said, you had the camp leading into the first scheduled fight, then you had to mm-hmm. come back and sort of reset. Everything pretty much the same, training with your brother, of course, the great Chris yeah. Dacus. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, I took like like four or five days off uh from from that tuesday that i got or that wednesday i got the call until like that following monday because we were driving and stuff and it was just killing me like driving like just consistently driving for for 36 hours it, it was a kind of a a pain but uh yeah monday i oh, no, i'm sorry sunday I, I went in sparring uh as soon as we got home i sparred on sunday and just got right back into it uh nothing's different i'm still training with the same guys i've been training with They're my brother and the, and the little group of guys that we have there at the gym that are uh kind of just playing it safe so it's 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 good. Uh, I don't have really anything to um, to like change or anything like that. Again, yeah. it's just fine. It's just fine tuning everything. Just making sure uh, um, uh, that like conditioning and everything is good. And and, and I just kind of try to maintain this this peak right now for the next next week or so. How about the weight cut? Because like you were cutting weight, I'm sure for the <laughs> the first fight, then you got to reset and then come back. How's how's all that going? Yeah. So I was actually the Tuesday that we that we landed in uh vegas we get weight checked and i was only i was only like eight pounds off so that's the lightest that's honestly like the lightest i've ever shown up to vegas uh so it was good um i didn't want to be that light uh for the next like four weeks that are that were coming up so i did gain a little bit of weight back i've been walking around about 200 about 202 for the past you know three weeks so mm-hmm. it's all good it, it's it's no, nothing different um how do you see this fight playing out on May 8th? Obviously, you know, Phil's going to try and throw those bombs. You know, he's got good wrestling as well. But like you said, uses more of his striking. How, how do you see the fight playing out? Um, he's a, like, to me, he's kind of a one-round guy in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he can't get you out in the first round, he looks to wrestle for the rest of the rounds. And, and I'm going to make him wrestle from the very beginning of the fight. You know, I'm going to be in his face from the very beginning. It's not going to be any different, like, no game plan different than than I did the uh, uh, against uh because Ryan, you know, I'm going to be in his face from the very start. I'm going to make him wrestle. I'm going to make him strike, and and I'm going to get him out of there in the second round. I believe that. We haven't talked since Ben Askren, Jake Paul. What did you think? I'm sure you didn't watch it live, or maybe you did, but uh, I'm sure you caught caught the highlights. Anyways, sadly, I did. Uh, I don't know. It's it is what it is. It, it, it's what we expected it to be. Uh, right. I mean, I don't know. He's, like everybody's saying, Ben Askren just had hip surgery, and he's he's got the worst striking in MMA. So what do you expect? But well, my only getting... my only thing about that fight was, and look, I don't think Ben was going to come back and win, but I think some refs would have let that go on a little bit longer. Did you get that sense, yeah. or am I out to lunch on that? Yeah, yeah, no, I I agree. I think I think that they should have let it go a little bit more. It's kind of suspicious as to how early they stopped it. Yeah, uh, but you know, I don't know. And now and now that Paul kid's getting all this this this. It exposure. worked. Yeah, he's he's getting oh, yeah. everyone calling him out now. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> you know, so. people are people are saying like they were doing the chants and stuff, and it's just. It's out of hand. It's it's playing in his favor. You know, he's getting he's getting all this all this content to, to go out there and uh, and like just keep posting stuff, and it's just going to give him more and more uh, content to go out there. So he's he's smart in the way he's doing it. And and we're also fresh off UFC 261. What did you think of that card? I mean, that was crazy. Not only having the fans back, but those two back to back injuries, which was nuts. I don't think I've ever seen that on a card before. And then of course the three finishes with all the title fights. I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah, it was wild, especially because the fans are back. I think the fans played a huge like, like favor in, in the fights being crazy. You know, from the very beginning, from even the very first fight, it was wild. Like I watched the whole card and the flyweights in the very beginning. It was oh it Jeff was just, Molina, yeah, that fight was yeah, great. It was a good card from the very beginning, and I think the fans like the fans played a factor because people were just trying to put on a good show for for the first fight back for the fans. But it was a it was a really really wild card. Uh, it, I liked it. I mean, I can't wait to make that walk in front of fans. So hopefully, sometime soon, I will. So they're having? Aren't they having some fans in the Apex, or is there no fans at all? I was trying to remember with with what's Honestly, happening. I have no idea. I mean, the last time, they, I think the last time they did it was the pay per view, but that was because it's a pay per view. I think that was the Engano Stipe, right? Yeah. So I think I think they only put fans in there because of that. But I yeah. don't know. I mean, I ho- hopefully they switch it. I'm trying to. Hopefully, I mean, I want them to switch it, and, and but. I understand where they're coming from. I mean, it's a, it's a fight night, so. Do you, because some people, I mean, I know it's not rare. I mean, it's kind of rare for those people, but do you feel like you fight better without fans? I mean, some, some do, they don't like the noise. Some people, you know, they obviously, you could see in the performances on Saturday that some were definitely amplified by that, by having the fans there. Yeah. I mean, I think fighters base it a lot, a lot off of the fans. If the fans are there, like the fans energy and stuff, but I don't, I, I try not to be a part of any of that. You know, I'm, I'm really like a, 
uh, like a mental game kind of person. Uh, as long as you're mentally you're mentally there to fight, you're there regardless if it was in a cage in front of 15,000 people or if it's at the apex and nobody's there. You know, I, I have to go out there and perform regardless. So I try not to worry about that. Any update on your brother's next fight? Uh, you know, I know he didn't win that long ago, but uh, any, are you hearing anything in terms of when he could be back? I mean, not yet. I mean, he's still like talking about negotiating the contract and everything like that. Um, oh, see, is, I guess, is he a free agent or does he have like one fight left or... No, he has one foot on the contract. We're just oh, but then you got to renegotiate. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's doing that. Um, hopefully, that we have word like, I don't know, July or August, he can fight. He can get on a card. I mean, he wants to fight. I mean, he doesn't want to take any more time off. Um, I know the him being a cop is kind of ending right now, so he has a lot more time to train. So I can't wait to see him like at his full potential of training. You know, yeah, he's been full, training. Yeah, getting to do full time. I mean, it's, yeah. And he's already had such a successful career even doing this. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy to see how much better he could be, you know, so. Yeah, we'll be keeping tabs on that. Okay, before we go, any uh, any TV shows you're watching right now? Any what are you doing for downtime right now in terms of? Nah, I just, actually just moved into the, moved into my house. Oh, congrats! Uh, bought a house or renting or? I, uh, no, my girlfriend and I we bought a, we bought this. I actually bought this. Um, oh, congrats! Yeah, kind of, uh, we were looking around for a little bit, and um, all the houses were kind of too expensive that we got approved for. Even though we got approved for it, we were still weren't sure if we wanted to take them. But uh, this kind this house kind of fell into our lap. We got a good. Uh, Good little renovation that we did. Um, but yeah, actually, like four houses to where I'm sitting right now. Four houses to my left. My brother my brother lives right there. So oh, cool. Houses down. Her parents live across the street. Her grandparents live across the street, too. So it, it's a little tight-knit little little block, and it's good. So I'm happy to be here. Is this the first time you and your girlfriend have lived together? Yeah, actually, it is. Yeah, we okay, moved that's in good. Because this, this is – listen, I, I as someone who's married now, but I'll tell you, like, that's – to me, that's more important than marriage. If you can live with a person, then you're – you know, I think you're set. So big big, <laughs> yeah. big, uh, big step, man. And buying a house, too. That's that's awesome. I mean, building some equity, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's about time. I mean, we've been together for, like, eight years. So it's 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 time to move in. We were, we were going to, like, rent and stuff like that, but I don't want to waste any money. So yeah. we're just here. Bought the house. The house looks really ridiculously good. Uh, I can't thank my contractor enough for making it good, and I'm just glad to take that next step. So, and probably a relief too. You you have this fight scheduled now. Like at least you got all this done before time. Because I've had to buy a house, and it's very stressful. Oh no, believe me, I was stressing when I got the call. When I got the call that I tested positive and the fight was off, I was a little uh, a little worried. You know, money's tight right now for me, and uh, that 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 call came, and I didn't. And then they said that. Did I want to wait until July? And I was like, yeah, no, there's no way in hell I'm waiting until July. Like, that's too long. I can't wait. So I, I've put my all my eggs in this basket of fighting. So I, I need I need to fight as much as I can. So Very cool. Uh, we're looking forward to it. UFC Fight Night next Saturday, believe it or not. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Kyle, always appreciate the time. Anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. No, just the usual people that, that are always there uh, to uh, help me train and all the heavyweights that are helping me train. Um, yeah. My social media is Kyle Dawkins. My on on uh, Instagram, Kyle underscore Dawkins, and on Twitter it's just Kyle Dawkins. So just come on, come over, give me a follow, and I uh, enjoy the show.